Good day guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Okay, so now we've just been playing this excellent demo, Wolong Fallen Dynasty demo by Team Ninja. And I've got some thoughts on it, so let's go dive into that right now. Okay, as we start a new game, we're treated to a character creation screen. And it's done incredibly well. So if Neo was Team Ninja's version of Dark Souls, then Wolong is Team Ninja's version of Sekiro. It's very Dark Souls-like in its playstyle, and a lot of it is done exceptionally well, especially the character creation. And then one thing that got me very impressed right from the get-go was how detailed the character creation is. You know, you can have the male and female, and then appearance template and this is really a, a good feature as well like a lot of african-american characters in video games have really poor hairstyles but not on this one you still have a lot of choice you know it's just a basically it's just a basic slider system that allows you to make very detailed edits and this is kind of an industry standard now for rpgs and action games and modern games but some of it is done better than others and as you can see, this one does it very, very well. Very detailed. You can customize most of the hairstyles back and front to make very unique looking characters. Incredibly unique looking characters. So there is there is a lot you can do with this slider system in making your character. One of the good things about other games like Elden Ring is you can really, really take some time with this and get some really good realistic looking characters and some very goofy looking characters which is always fun done making your character which you could spend easily several hours doing you're then asked to select a martial arts form which is a fire phase attack oriented orientated earth phase defense orientated wood phase support and metal phase debuff and water stealth phase orientated Usually I go for an attack, but this does not actually matter. You can always change this later, which I thought was a good touch into the character creation. Okay, so what is the story of Wo Long? The story of Wo Long is set in 184 AD in China, and it's at the end of the late Han Dynasty. And if you don't know what that is, it's basically Dynasty Warriors story. So 184 AD in China, late Han Dynasty, the world is in turmoil and infested with demons. And the long and prosperous dynasty is on the verge of collapse as the yellow turban rebellion rages by zhang xiao way of the taiping the protagonist our hero is a malicious soldier and he heads out to suppress the yellow turbans when he meets a young man and this engul this encounter engulfs the protagonist into a swirling intrigue of chaos so that's pretty interesting so it's during the yellow turban rebellion in China so who are the characters I've got some characters here if you don't want any spoilers you might want to use the timestamps below or the little card I'll put in the top corner or something I'll put something somewhere alrighty and now here are the characters first and most important is us the protagonist this is our character who will be sharing our adventure with and most likely getting him constantly murdered over and over and over again then we have Xiao Yun, also known as Zi Long. He was a military general in the late Eastern Han Dynasty. And then we have Xiang, Li uh, Xiang Liang. <laughs> this was the guy we fight in the demo at the end of the stage. And wow, what a fight that was, right? That was brutal for me, I don't know about you. But in real life, he was also known as Zai Fang. We met, but we meet him as a giant man wielding a huge mace determined to wipe the floor with our brains and he almost does a pretty good job at doing that. Then we have the man, the myth, the legend himself, Liu Bu. If you don't know who Liu Bu is and you've lived in a video game cave, I'll just tell you. Most people would have met Liu, Liu Bu through Dynasty Warriors and you know just how fearful and powerful he was in that overwhelmingly strong killing thousands with his mighty spear and mounted on his trusty steed. In real life Liu Bu was a courtesy name, his real name was Veng Ziang 
He was a Chinese military general and warlord who killed his commanding warlord, Ding Yun, and then defected to Dong Zio. Well, that will do all this ding dang dong for this part. Let's get on to the main core of the game, the weapons and martial arts. Wolong is a martial arts based game featuring many weapons and martial arts styles and chi, or spirit energy. The whole system is focused on raising spirit, spirit energy or chi and channel it into powerful martial arts and wizardly spells such as protection, destruction and healing. Spirit Chi is increased with offensive, which is your blue bar, and decreased with defensive, which is the orange bar. If your defensive bar maxes out, you'll become staggered. It's also true for your foe as well, so if you do the same to your foe, he'll be staggered. It also has a, a moral system, a morale system, which is indicated by a number ranking from 0 to 20, and it's engulfed in a little orange circle. This will also increase damage and your combat effectiveness. The choice of weapons that we have are what we know so far and the ones I have played with is a straight saber, single sword, a glaive or a spear or dual swords. And on top of the weapon system we also have three main styles of combat, oh four main styles of combat should I say. The styles of combat are deflect, fatal strike, martial arts or weapon skills and stealth. Fatal Strike will happen when you break the enemy's posture, which is the orange bar, by pressing triangle or Y. Deflect, this is something that you should really be spending a lot of your time learning. Uh, learning to master deflect is probably the most important thing in this game, because if you don't, you'll die a lot from, ver from the very, very fast-paced combat style and the relentless foe attacks. Most of the NPCs will fight defensively, but when they do turn on the offensive, they can quickly overwhelm you. Luckily, you've got the moral system to aid you, if your deflect skills are a little bit lacking. You also have the standard block as well. This can lead to you being staggered though, and you can't block the critical attacks. And that's usually indicated by a red dot on the enemy when he's just about to do a move. Also, if you're finding combat a little bit more tricky, we also got the Guardian Forces. Forgive me if I pronounce these names wrong, but we've got Zhu Zhu Q, which is a Fire Phoenix, a Fire Phoenix. Uh, we have Bai Hu, which is a Lightning Tiger or a Tiger that will help you in combat, and Zhuan Wu, which is kind of like a Water Dragon, I think. So some of the Guardian Forces are born from the bonds that they have with the heroes. You know, the Fire is. The fire is attack based, and then the earth is support based, and the water is healing based. One of the most impressive features of this game for me personally was the avenged and revenge system. So say you're fighting something and it overwhelms you and you end up dying, your name will appear as a purple banner in somebody else's game and they can claim revenge for you and then when they do you'll get a little little message in the top left corner saying avenged by such a body also it's, it's also the same for them if they die and you avenge them but if you're like me you're gonna go into all hell fire fury while complaining that oh we did, this didn't work or that didn't work you know you get the picture but you'll go into a whole all hell fire fury and get your stuff back. It does make me want to go out of my way to avenge players though, because when you do, you get very nice bonuses and the chance of rare items and weapons. So it is worth doing it, and it makes me want to do it because it makes me feel good as well, right? You know, com camaraderie and all that stuff. And it'll also give you a very nice morale boost, which helps you out in your game. Not only does it have the Avenged and Revenge system, it also does have a multiplayer system where you can go and assist other players and they can assist you. So if you are stuck in a boss room, you can ask somebody for help and they'll come and help you and you can run through the level together. This would be great to play with friends. I don't know if they're going to have like a friends feature on it where you can get your specific friends in. But I think it's a good feature overall. And also... On that note, if you do die in a boss arena, you no longer have to defeat the boss, so it's not going to brutalize you for losing against the boss. All you have to do is enter that boss's arena and you'll get your your spirit back and your points back to your next level. I mean, you still do need to beat the boss if you want to spend them, right? But it won't make you stick there. 
so you'll get your stuff back. Okay, that, that leads me on to the level design. I found the level design okay, but what I liked most about, about the levels was how freely and smoothly I was able to traverse it. Now, it's just a demo, and I know I felt like, personally, the level was kind of small and crammed in, but being able to manoeuvre so freely, I found that a breath of fresh air. On top of that, I liked using different strategies to get stealth kills and bonus damage from above on my foes, which was a nice touch, and that leads me into some of the bad points of the game. Some of the bad points for me personally, in my opinion, was the stealthing. The stealth in this game is one of its weaker points. The character can't crouch to smoothly do a stealth kill on grounded enemies. You have to walk. But it often leads to an accidental sprint or run and then that leads to detection. But lucky for us, we've mastered the deflect system, right? Right? You've got to master that deflect system because otherwise you'll end up dead. I think what annoyed me most about it that it was advertising that it had a stealth mode with the water gate or the water stance, right? It says, oh, this is a guy, this is a master of stealth. And it kind of made me a little bit like, oh, but I can't crouch and do stealth properly. You can still do it, it's not ineffective, it's just not up to standards, I don't suppose. And one of the other most frustrating things for me personally were the healing pots. You know, you put them on your hot bar and they just don't work. You have to sometimes spam up or go into your menu to use them, and when you're inside an intense sub-boss fight, like the murder turkey or the tigers, that's just not effective. I found myself running completely away just to use a pot to run back, and then use a stealth to overwhelm the enemy anyway when I start running out. So I think that kind of needs work. Again, this is the demo, and they probably will put the work into that. I also think later in the game, it's going to take a lot of inventory management, so you'll spend a lot of time in the menu, you know, organising your items and equipment, because you get quite a lot of them, or you did in the demo at least. The default system, I don't really think it's one of its weaker points. I do think a lot of players are going to struggle with it. I like it. I think it works fine. I think it's just like Sekiro. You've just got to learn the rhythm of your enemies. I think once you do that, you'll be absolutely fine. So it's just something that a lot of people will have to take into consideration. I'm pretty sure they're going to be putting a workaround into it as well. So, I've, I, like I said, I've not played Neo, but I'm a big Sekiro fan, so I think they'll build a workaround in for it for players that are, you know, parry gods, so they'll give somebody, you know, something for everybody, I suppose. So, on to my final thoughts, I like the game, for sure I like the game, I can't wait for the full release, I only got to play the demo for about eight hours, and I gave it a good going over, like, I, I did play that very intensely, I think it's a great game, I'm glad it's gone down the Chinese route rather than another Viking or Samurai spin-off, the RPG element is a nice touch as well, letting you get stronger stats, swapping out your skills and moves, and also letting you swap your Guardian forces out to just make all kinds of builds and strategies, it's going to lead to very, very nice character builds, and very, very customised customized feel to your character so you're not going to feel like a copy paste, piece of paste character but that's my thoughts on Woe Long guys what do you guys feel about it did you play the demo if you did what did you feel about it let me know your strong points and down points and you know guys like comment share and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one real soon take it easy